keep your heads up and your arms covered, family. Here's the verse of the day for March 24th. And it's Psalms 37, 5. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. And that's what we're doing, trusting in Jesus Christ while we wait for him to come and get us. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm seeing some gigantic, enormous signs and confirmations. And I'm going to go over them with you right now. All glory to our Father, in the name above every name, Jesus Christ. So our brother, the Iron Duke, left a comment, and he asked, just a quick question. How long are the sun and Jupiter going to be in conjunction in Pisces? If it's three days, then we've got another major sign on our hands, possibly the second half of Revelation 12. And I responded with, LOL, awesome question. And the answer and what I've seen is off the charts. All glory to our Father in Jesus Christ's name. I'll go over it first thing next video. Father bless you. And he said, same to you, Patrick. And I showed you, family that the conjunction is happening on Resurrection Day. And I'll answer his question and show you how long they're going to be in conjunction in Pisces. And here it is in Stellarium. And Jupiter is in the fish above the well, and so is the sun, and right between them is Mercury. And as you go through the days, you could see Mercury is going to be in conjunction with Jupiter on the 27th. And as you keep going through the days to Passover, and I guess you could call that the three days right there. When you zoom in, you can see that Jupiter and the sun start going into conjunction on the seventh Passover. And as you go through the days to Resurrection Day, that's when they are the closest. And after that, when you keep going through the days, you could see the sun moving out of what they call Pisces. And on the 19th, the sun will be out of the fish what they call Pisces. And on the 19th, the moon will be right there, lined up in conjunction with Jupiter in the fish. And the reason why that 10 days stands out to me, and this is just speculation because no one knows the day or hour but our Father, but in Revelation 2.10, if the rapture and resurrection is on resurrection day on the 9th, when Jupiter and the Sun are in conjunction on Resurrection Day, ten days later, the Sun leaves what they call Pisces. Revelation 2.10 Fear none of those things which thou suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. And when you go back ten days to Resurrection Day, you could see right there, this asteroid, Photographica, is following the conjunction. And I've already shown you, all glory to our Father, there's so much more lined up this Passover Resurrection Day. It lines up perfectly with the 1290 days since the 70 nations gathered and recognized Islam in the Jewish temple and sacrificed a lamb on the Mount of Olives, the very place that... They asked Jesus Christ what it would be like when he came back. He was on the Mount of Olives telling them there'll be wars and rumors of wars and nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. It's all happening, family. And they sacrificed the lamb right where he was preaching that. And while all the planets are lining up, you could see that the moon and Venus was just in conjunction. When you go back hours, you could see the moon and Venus right there above Cleopatra and Queen Esther. And our brother in Jesus Christ sent this picture that he took last night. And we have another planet parade on our hands and it's all over the internet. Rare chance to see five planets at once to take place over six sunsets. And most of you know this. It's the five planets that they call Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Uranus, and Mars. And it's right here. The planets will make their debut on Saturday, March 25th, tomorrow, family. The best opportunity to see them will be next Tuesday, March 28th. And the show will end on Thursday, March 30th. And since the best opportunity to see them is Tuesday, March 28th, here's what it looks like. And it's gigantic, enormous, and I'll show you right now why. 
because it starts right here with the sun getting ready to go into conjunction with Jupiter. But on the 28th, Jupiter will be in conjunction with Mercury going into the fish. And as you can see right here, Venus will be with Uranus right above Queen Esther, the asteroid. And when you move over to the moon, it will be in conjunction with Mars. And you already know, Jesus Christ said the signs of his coming will be in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. And they're all right here lined up and lining up for the greatest three days ever in history, Passover to Resurrection Day, the anniversary. So I'll take you to the new moon report because the moon is playing a gigantinormous part in all of this, just like Jesus Christ said. And it was not confirmed on March 22nd, but I received this email yesterday on the 23rd. And when you scroll down, you could see that it was confirmed yesterday over Israel at 614. And when you go to 614 in Greek, the time the new moon was confirmed over Israel, the definition is hidden usage, hidden away, secret, stored up. And when you go to 614 in Hebrew, the definition is literally ingathering, harvest. And the signs are in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. So now I'll take you to the sun. And the next sunspot that's coming around is 3262. And there's nothing in Greek but Strong's Hebrew. 3262 is carried away by God. And that's exactly what we're waiting for. And the auroras are off the charts. As you can see right here, it says severe geomagnetic storm. Forecasters completely missed this one. On March 23rd, 24th, auroras spread into the United States as far as Colorado and New Mexico. And it says, the show blew my socks off. And as you can see right here, northern lights spotted over Mount Shasta. Now I'm going to show you something extremely gigantinormous that I can't believe that I missed. All glory to you, Father, for showing it to me. And I showed you the sixth annual Obama Gala will be Saturday, April Fool's Day this year. And this is the first time that the Obama Gala has had 400 monarch butterflies coming to an enclosed tent to the Obama Gala. And I showed you, Nissan 14 in the year 33 was on April Fool's Day. Now here's what I'm going to show you that I missed. And it's right below this, where the butterfly is, the Obama Gala. And usually on the Obama websites, it says the Obama Foundation. So when I looked at that, that's what I thought it said right next to where it says the Obama Gala with the monarch butterfly. But when you zoom in, it literally is called the transformation. And that's what we're waiting for. The transformation in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed, transformed. And remember, I've said it many times. I had a dream, and Obama was inviting us to a dinner, but we were already going to a dinner. And in the dream, when this happened, I knew that the rapture was about to happen around the time of one of his dinners. And this is the sixth annual Obama dinner that they're bringing 400 butterflies to, and 400s and strongs means to shout, and they literally named it the transformation. April 1st, April Fool's Day, family. And I've showed you this, and I don't know if this is the covenant in Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 through 27, but it matches the dates that they had the 70 Nations Conference when they recognized Islam in a Jewish temple. And they sacrificed a lamb on the Mount of Olives. 
And Passover will be 1290 days since September 25th, 2019. And Resurrection Day will be 1290 days since September 27th, 2019. It lines up perfectly with Passover and Resurrection and the 1290 days. And these are facts. Now I'll take you to verse 29. Because this is gigantinormous. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. Well, when you look at it in the original text, tribulation, it's right here. Verse 29, immediately yet after the affliction, constriction, it doesn't even say tribulation. It says Immediately yet after the constriction, the affliction. And when you zoom in to that word, that in the King James Version is tribulation. In the original Greek text, it's affliction. It's G2347. It's right here. Strong's Greek 2347. Imagine that. Tribulation. Usage. Persecution, affliction. Are you catching it, family? 23, 47. We're in the year 2023, and Passover is on 4 7. And I don't know what else to say except the resurrection's about to happen, the rapture's about to happen, tribulation is about to happen, affliction is about to happen. 2347. And I showed you, when you calculate from and including Tuesday, November 8th, the total blood moon eclipse and the conjunction of Mercury and the Sun in the scale, to and including Sunday, April 9th, this year, Resurrection Day, the result is 153 days, like the great catch. And when you calculate from September 25th, 2019, when this conference started, the gathering of the 70 nations, and you add 1,290 days, it lands on Passover, April 7th. And when you go from the middle of this conference, when they recognized Islam as God in a Jewish temple, and you may be perceiving, and remember, the Neset, Netanyahu's new government, is pushing a ban on Jesus Christ now. Almost 1,290 days since they recognized Islam as God. When you add 1,290 days, it lands on April 8th. The same day that Hebcal and the Torah is saying that's Resurrection Day. And when you go from September 27th, 927, the last day of the conference of 70 nations gathering to recognize Islam and sacrifice a lamb on the Mount of Olives, and you add 1,290 days, it lands on Sunday, April 9th, Resurrection Day on our calendar. You can't make this up. It's precise. These are facts. And we're about to see if it's the resurrection, if it's the rapture. But I'll tell you right now, nothing happens unless our Father allows it. This is lined up perfectly. And speaking of Resurrection Day... I'm hoping that's it. And he opens the graves on the anniversary of the last time he opened the graves. And I've been casting the burden upon him to get Christina a headstone for her gravesite because I haven't had the money to buy one and I don't right now. And I have other things that I need to take care of as well. But our Father will supply all our needs according to the riches and glory of Christ Jesus. And I've been looking at headstones, and this is very difficult for me. But I'm trying to knock it out and get this done. And I'm hoping that I could get one put on her gravesite before Resurrection Day or by Resurrection Day. Just in case it is the rapture. Just in case it is the resurrection. Just in case God brings Christina's body back to life on that day. And we know that Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome all went to the tomb and brought spices that they might come and anoint him. 
and I've been here in Santa Rosa a few times since Christina escaped and I've been in so much pain that I have not been able to go to her graveside yet but I'm going to before I leave either way whether God gives me a headstone before I leave or not and I have no experience in this so if any of you brothers and sisters know where to get a good headstone quick please email me there's a couple that I'm looking at that I think Christina would like and if you're able and Jesus Christ is guiding you to help me get this for her God bless you for any donations and God bless everyone that's helped me through all of this thank you Christina was grateful for all of you and I know she'll be thankful for you forever family in Jesus Christ and so will I all glory to our Father for you in the name above every name Jesus Christ and even though I want to get her this headstone all glory to our Father I already ordered more backpacks and more Bibles and I already handed out all 48 backpacks that I brought with me it was easy and a blessing and a privilege and it's easy because there's people on the streets everywhere and I received a lot of messages saying that you're grateful that I'm out here doing it because a lot of you can't do it yourselves so it's a privilege family it's an honor and I'm very thankful and I'm gonna keep pushing God willing until he comes and gets us and it's all for the glory of love it's all for Jesus Christ.